and welcome to Iron Dinos. I'm Sean, I'm playing more Metroid, and we're about to go fight uh, Ridley, the Space Dragon, who is super awesome and super scary. So, you know, we had a bit of a problem with Craid. I forgot about these doors. Um, we had a bit of a problem with Craid, but um, yeah, we'll see how we do with Ridley. Um, I imagine he's going to be more like the, uh, oh, we'll find out. Alright. I imagine he's going to be more like the, oh, he's going to attack me when I went through that door. Oh, another one of these. Cool. Th thanks for the not upgrade just before I fight one of Samus's most uh, evil, recurring, and dangerous foes. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, okay. I, I will thank you for that. Yeah, so I'm assuming this is going to be more like the um, Snares version than the original version when he was uh, a wanky dragon who... A wanky looking dragon who just kind of shot fireballs in a wave. Um, he was still quite tricky, uh, I found, but... Um, let's see. All right. Where you at? There we go! Here we go! Oh, I love that scream. That is so cool. I... Oh, I just wasted all of my fucking super missiles! Shoot them into the sea. Crap! Crap! Alright, tank him, tank him! Ah! There we go. Almost at half health already. He's going red though. He can't be that far off. This is a lot less. This is a lot less tricky than Great, We got him! Got him! Oh, there we go. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, let's go recharge. Um. <coughs> Yeah, that was a cool fight. That was nowhere near as hard as Craig, but then we've got like a lot more um, energy tanks and stuff since then. So yeah, that didn't disappoint. He was he was still uh, he was still cooler looking than than in the original. Ah, uh, right. Speaking of the original, that's where we've got to in our little discussion of uh, of Metroid games. So start at the start, as they say. There's nothing quite like Metroid, except Alien, which is very much like Alien, <laughs> very much like Metroid. But if you're going to draw inspiration from anything, it may as well be perhaps the greatest sci-fi movie of all time. So, yeah, like, I absolutely adored the original Metroid. I didn't have a NES growing up, so I played a little bit of it when I was young around a mates or whatever, but... Um, I wasn't even as aware of this, I was always aware of this as a franchise, but I wasn't aware of it um, having status the way I was aware of Super Metroid, which I still don't understand why I didn't get. Um, so I played this properly for the first time, what, 2017, 2018, whenever the Nintendo, uh, the, the NES Mini came out. Um, it was, you know, I ran through a couple of the Mario Brothers games, of course, that's what you're going to do. But then I went straight for Metroid, and I absolutely adored it. Um, I definitely say that even after all these years, the, um, the atmosphere still really holds up. Um, you're aware you're playing a NES game, you know, you're aware of playing something that's been done and redone a million times in a million different ways, but I I still just absolutely loved my time with it. Um, so Metroid's, um, <laughs> oh, okay, uh, Metroid's idea, uh, it's, it's concept, which is so, was so unique for the time, is to chuck you into 
an unnerving room full of uh, monsters and weird looking uh, weird looking architecture and weird looking well, you know blocks that, that make up the, the room it's a, an 8-bit NES game you know they all look different and they all look strange and they don't really look like much of anything you're going to have played before on the NES and it chucks you into this room and that room leads to a corridor which is full of similar looking blocks and lots more things trying to kill you and that leads to several different, yet very similar looking corridors, which leads to more rooms with absolutely no additional prompting. It kind of expects you to then just figure out your way through all of these similar looking rooms and puzzles until you eventually find something that looks a bit different. And you're like, oh, okay, I guess I'm in a new area now. And like, it, it does not at all handhold you right from the start of the game it it just throws you into this confusing um, beautiful landscape and just expects almost like it expects you to find your own fun from the start like it it, it really is that that basic that it's just like yeah here, here's this area go nuts eventually you'll find something and it'll probably kill you or the game will just wear you down and it'll kill you <laughs> because this game is really, really hard. <laughs> like, again, playing with modern sensibilities. Even playing with modern sensibilities. Well, I'm a hell of a lot more of a gamer than I was um, back when I, when I was a kid playing this round of eights or whatever. I still found this pretty tough. Like, there, there were points when I did get stuck for quite a while. Um... The, it, it doesn't help that every time you go through a screen, so you'll go through um, you'll go through a room into a shaft for the for the most part. So the you know shafts are vertical, which again games didn't really do, you know side scrolling games they went left to right, they went up or down. They didn't do both. So this kind of you go between screens and you you kind of start scrolling up. So whenever you leave one room for another and you go back, every hazard you previously seen in that room is back. It's, it's just there again. You got. I remember when you did that before. I saw that coming. You're not gonna scare me twice. Yeah, everything is back. So you've got to find it again and again and again. And if you get lost, well, you can, you can find yourself so easily going in a circle and, like, not even realize it for a few passes. And then you realize the exact enemy placement and uh, maybe a couple of. Uh, bits on the ceiling that, that look vaguely reminiscent, so you'll you kind of find yourself, ah oh, crap, no, I'm here again. Um, so yeah, and everything will respawn, and the environmental hazard, so as you've seen in this, there's lava and the like, no invincibility frames, it, it's just going to wipe you down. The enemies, when you get hit by an enemy, you get like a moment of invulnerability, but you, you go into lava, it's just draining you. Um, it's And it's the kind of game that, um, because you because you will quite often find yourself um, so circling about trying to find where to go next, you'll very quickly become overconfident. Because you've seen this room, you've seen the enemies in it, you know where they are, they're, but they'll chip away at your health, and then you'll die. And then... You kind of go, okay, right, I've just just got to jump over that that pit. Um, let's go get over that pit, and then maybe I'll see something. Oh, I've fallen in the pit, and now there's lava in there, and now I'm dead. It's, this game will kill you. It is out to kill you. Oh, hello there. Ah, oh, the screw attack. Lovely. Beautiful. Okay. I'm now uh, significantly more invulnerable than I was before. <laughs> yeah, where was I? Yeah, um, so yeah, this game's trying to kill you. Like, enemies will drop health, but it's a very small percentage. And as you get further in the game, as I'm sure you've seen with this one, things hit harder and there's more of them. <laughs> also, the original version, doesn't have this lovely map. Do you know what it does? It just throws bosses at you. 
basically you'll you'll be walking along and you'll be heading towards a room and you're like, oh here's another room. Oh, oh, there's a boss. Now there's not an awful lot in the original version, but um, but they are you know Craig and really in particular that I remember are fucking brutal. Um, and what I found a deceptively fiendish mechanic in this game is the save rooms. Now, these are pretty few and far between, and often just out the way enough that you won't be dropping in for a quick save game every time you part. It's not like this. So you can spend an hour searching through some of those almost identical corridors looking for a way to advance. Make a mistake, and you've lost an hour. You've just lost it. There's nothing you can do. You can go down, you can find a new area, start wandering around that, um, start searching that, searching that. Get overwhelmed. Die. You've lost it. You're going back. It can give you... As I mentioned before, as, as you walk around more and more, it will give you a, a confidence. But quite equally, it can give you an increasing sense of dread. Because, uh, uh intended. Because you can be walking around for like, you can be walking around for an hour and suddenly think to yourself, I haven't saved. And, like, however you've decided to, whether you've learned the area off the top of your head or, or whatever, however you've come to, to mark how far you are away from the save room, you'll be sitting there thinking, okay. I've got to go through all of that to to find a new one, or do I just push on? And do I just push on until I find another one? What do I do? And you can get almost—I wouldn't say paralysed with with fear over it, but it certainly adds an element to it. Certainly adds an element to the game. Um, I'll add to that. I've mentioned already. It's not a map. There is not a map in the first game. The first game is very, very much a case of... I'm sure you'll figure it out. I think I can see what I need to do. Crap! Okay, I put a little edit in there because I spent about five minutes doing that and I couldn't bloody do it. So I don't know if you need to come in from the other way or if I was just being naff. But uh, yeah, back to back to the original Metroid. The um, the game isn't <laughs> the game. The game does through your lifeline, like like with like with all of them. It gives you additional um, permanent health and rocket increases. Um, although you can completely miss basically all of them. Um, and there are mandatory weapon upgrades to progress to new areas. Um, and some making the gun actually worse or less powerful, I found. Uh, maybe that's just me. Do you know what? I... It's kind of a series thing. I'm really not a big fan of, um, of speed boost puzzles. I, fi I find them... I find them a little finicky. Um, I don't dislike them. When we come to Metro Gen, I'll talk about them further. But um, yeah, uh, it's, it's not my it's not my favourite having to um, take a shine spark between a couple of like I can see what I need to do. I need to run, keep it, jump down to there, get onto that block over there, duck, and do it forward. I know what I need to do. I just can't bloody do it. Um, I just have a trouble doing that sort of thing. But anyway, so <laughs> back to the first one. I suck at Shine Spark. Sorry. I, I cut out like a 10 minute segment in an earlier video. I probably referenced it. Oh, back to Metroid. Back to original <laughs> Metroid. Um, Samus Arm Desert Arm Cannon is a fantastic, um, a fantastic bit of design actually. Um, because you don't need like an extra animation or sprite complexity. She just holds her arm out for run running directly. So you can always see where you're shooting as well. Um, it's very clever. And when you upgrade to a new type, the gun stays, stays the same, but the beam looks different to show which weapon you're using. Um, 
there are upgrades to the cannon. Early on you'll find the missile, which obviously allows you to fire from a limited number of missiles for greater damage. Um, and there are various beam missiles, uh, uh, sorry, beams, um, such as an ice beam that freezes enemies and the wave beam that goes through everything, if I remember correctly, increases the area of attack. Um, Samus suit also uses the same concept, upgrading to more powerful, resilient Varia suit. Upgrading to the Varia suit, which is more powerful, changes Samus' colour, so you can indicate that you've, um, that you've made a change. And of course the Morph Ball, which allows Samus to turn into a ball and access small passages and uh, can also use bombs to destroy sections of walls, damage enemies, and um, I'm not sure if it's in the first one, but later obviously it jumps her up, um, bounces her around. This is... It's such a... The Morph Ball! Until I started playing these games properly, giving them the time and respect they deserve with Metroid Prime and the like, I didn't understand the Morph Ball thing. Like, the first time she does it, in Metro 1, I'm like, <laughs> that's a bit silly. Um, you know, why would she turn into a ball and roll herself around everything? But the the way that breaks um, uh, bre breaks in a good way. The way the way that changes up the gameplay and allows you to use different styles of maneuverability where you might have tried a hundred things and actually no you're using the wrong weapon the whole time you know you're using the wrong means of transport i guess you call it and everything like that it's it's absolutely inspired and whatever the madman woman who first suggested that who was first on the side of um yeah yeah we've, we've got all this running and shooting and all this awesome thing but what if she turn into a ball it's just absolute genius um, and it and it's really fun to to roll around as the ball as well. Um, later on, there's also the screw attack, which uh, while jumping makes Samus invulnerable to everything she touches. The story in the first Metroid, I think, is still pretty solid. Um, as as bare bones as it is, it didn't need to be much more. It's it's significantly more than Mario, but you know, it didn't need to be much more. But a lot of it is told in the handbook, and more importantly, through the context in game. It gives you a reason for Samus to be where she is, and you playing it shows you why she's doing what she is, because she's a fucking badass, and the increasingly tough enemies that you face, um, which, which again tells a story of progression. You, f you know, you're facing the enemies, then you find one boss and that opens that part of a pa passage and then you fight the other one and then you can get to, um, is it Nori in the final area? Uh, you can get down to, uh, Mother Brain's area and then, um, then you finally find the Metroids. Um, it's all it's all really cool, interesting stuff that's told visually as you play, and that's um, that's very much to be commended. Um, it tells you, yeah, the 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 book or whatever, um, and the British version does get a few things wrong. I think it calls Andro uh, Samus an android and a him, um, if I recall correctly. Been a very long time since I. Um, it's been a very long time since I've looked at the manual and I did a brief scan, you know, online when I was just prepping for this video. And obviously didn't make a note of that. My bad. So, yeah, Samus is a bounty hunter, bounty hunter tasked with retrieving a Metroid, a parasitic organism from the space pirates commanded by Mother Brain. Along the way, she encounters Ridley, the monster that killed her parents. Oh my god, the, um... The, the manga for that. Um, some time ago I was watching um, some Call Me Johnny um, doing 
his his talk on um, on the first Metroid game, and he let me know like I wasn't aware of the oh maybe I was aware of the manga at the years ago, but I'd forgotten about it. I'm a big comic book guy, so I'm like oh fuck, there's a Metroid comic. Get that in me. It's awesome. Um, it that fleshes things out a lot. Um, it's it's official part of the canon, but yeah, Jesus Ridley is fucking awesome in that. But anyway. <laughs> Um, the planet you're on, Z Zeebs, Zebes, Zebes, whatever you want to call it, are littered with statues that uh, kind of look like corpses holding artifacts, which are the which upgrade the uh, which upgrade Samus' suit uh, from the ancient Chozo race, which uh, who raised Samus actually after Ridley murdered her parents. Um, the Metroids themselves are pretty unique in this game. They're by far the most aggressive and fast enemy type and will cling to you rapidly draining your life. Like, basically you have to get into a ball and bomb to get them off you and you have to do it very, very quickly. Like, when I first uh, got to them, you know, played the primes. Bear in mind, this, this is very fresh to me. Um, when I was first playing it just a few years ago and the Metro suddenly appeared, I was genuinely, like, surprised by how fast and aggressive they are. Um, and I was pretty much killed by the first one I encountered. Um, I'd, I'd got down there, I'd got down there with, um, you know, probably not full health and that, and I thought, oh, we'll go poke around in here. And yeah, I was really, really surprised in a in a very pleasant way. In a oh god, oh god, oh god, I'm panicking kind of way. It was super awesome. Um, they don't, they only like, despite being the title of the game, they don't actually um, appear until right at the very end, right in the final section as you're going towards the final boss. Um, and yeah, there's quite a few of them. And like I said, they 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 are incredible. Let's call them single-minded, because basically once they know where you are, they're coming. Um, they're freaking awesome. Um, finally, you reach Mother Brain, who's another somewhat unique enemy. Um, a gigantic brain in a jar, surrounded by lasers and shields, and you've kind of got to create the opening and fire through it while uh, yeah, shoot through it while avoiding a million projectile and bit and beams defeat her and the planet destabilizes and Samus was raced back off the planet to the ship for the countdown <laughs> for the countdown ru uh, runs out because this is a Metroid game and I love that um, you know you've got the pulse pounding music and everything it's like oh crap oh crap oh crap <laughs> you always think you're not gonna make it um, or I do anyway um, but but yeah, it's it's just an absolutely incredible game. Like I can understand, I can understand why some people wouldn't think it holds up. But you know what? For me, I'd say it does. I I I'd say, or what? Well, I would say it holds up in certainly in the sense that I had a thoroughly fun time playing it, and. I genuinely think uh, everyone who is interested should go and play it because I think you'll still have a good time. Um, it does have its flaws, um, a lot of which are just down to when it was released. The oh, I see what you're doing. Um, yeah, the the design for progression like moving forward in the game in certain areas is fucking ridiculous and like there's nothing to point you in that direction um one i i remember quite vividly was a single block um like was a single block two uh areas back that had to be shot out and isn't marked or even a different colour or anything and doesn't disappear when it was shot. You just kind of had to shoot where it is, jump up there, know it was gone and go through the hole. It's like, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, you, yeah, so you are a 
And if I'm not recall, I, it might have taken a missile to destroy it as well. So you could shoot it with a normal gun and maybe, like, a, absolutely ludicrous. I, like, because it was made in an era when the idea, kind of, kind of part of the, the, the idea back then was you'd have a game for, say, your birthday or Christmas, and then it would be quite a while until you got the next one because these were marketed predominantly at kids back then. So you had time to explore every corner and try every conceivable thing. Um, and even so, like, even so, it's taking the piss. There's some bits like that in the first, uh, funnily enough, there's like an aside, there are bits like that in the first Zelda game, and it actually put me off finishing the first Zelda game, but it didn't for a second put me off finishing uh, Metroid, because I'm not a kid anymore, and the internet now exists, and, like, I, I don't have time for that anymore. Like, as much as I'd love to play this entirely as originally intended and everything, uh, when I was stuck for more than an hour or two, I did just, uh, you know, I'm not too proud to say, I popped on an online guide just for a little nudge in the right direction because, you know, I, I got a job and shit. I, I got friends, I got partners, I got, I got all sorts of stuff I need to be doing that isn't necessarily coping every minute little area of, uh, of the original Metroid. But one thing I did love, one thing that really made me feel like a kid again is um, I promised myself as much as humanly possible I would do it blind, which I did, uh, again, other than looking for the occasional pointers, and I promised myself I would do it the way I would do it as a kid. And the only way, because it's... Ah, there we go. Because of the way it's set up, um, and there's no map, I got a big pad of paper, and I sat and I made a map of every single little room I went through and I kept having to revise it because obviously you don't know your starting point to most of these areas. Okay, so it's at the top, but you don't know if you're at the far left of it, the far right of it, somewhere in the middle. It might go round and go up again. Um, so yeah, I sat there drawing little maps um, and that, that was, I think I lasted longer, um, I think I lasted longer playing it without getting annoyed or needing nudges for cheats or anything um, because I was enjoying making my own map and stuff than I did with, um, well, for example, the, the Legend of Zelda where it's just too big, it's too massive to make a map. And I wasn't enjoying it in the same way as much as I still did enjoy the majority of that original game. And of course, um, and of course we can't finish without mentioning the um, some of the the biggest features that remain uh, part of the game to this day. You finish the game, and end screen gives you a percentage, um, and I believe a time. I'm not sure if there was a time on the first one, but certainly a percentage of how much of everything you completed, and that gave you a slightly different ending, um, which again was was not exactly common for the time. But further to that revealed uh, the, the, the best ending revealed in fact that Samus was a woman um, and so she probably with the uh, her or Zelda Princess Peach but you know none of those really star as playable characters in the game so Samus is definitely um, Nintendo's most proactive uh, female protagonist in all of their canon and quite personally I think she's one of, if not the absolute best. Um, it obviously, she's just a couple of pixels, so they had to put her in a bikini and give her long hair to make it absolutely clear it was a woman. A uh, bit gratuitous, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> later, later games have been a bit more gratuitous, but you know, it, it's fantastic that after the end of all that big adventure with that beautiful. Um, uh, beautiful suit that you see throughout the whole game and everything it actually subverts it, like the whole game is sitting there subverting your expectation by doing something new and being something different and being something unique and then it goes one step further at the end of actually you probably assume this was a bloke or a robot nope it's actually 
you know, nope, Samus is actually a woman. And that's fantastic. I love Samus. But, um, yeah, the first Metroid is an absolute Stone Cold classic. It's well worth your time. It's, um, it just absolutely must be played. It must be played. Um, this that I'm currently playing, I'll probably do a bit specifically on it later when I finished it, but we're, we're not too far from the ending now. Um, I wouldn't have thought. We've, we've opened the final area, so we'll go around, we'll get some power-ups in the next couple of parts and that, so we get to give us time to talk about some other Zelda... Uh, Zelda? Some other Metroid games. Uh, I'm not I'm not doing one of these series on a Zelda. I'm not. I'm not I've not played all of them. Um, and and I as much as I like it, I don't love it as much as I Met Metroid has genuinely gone from uh, in the last few years. In the last few years since getting my NES Mini um, has gone from Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime were two of my favourite games to now pretty much every Metroid game is one of my favourite games. Um, I absolutely love it. I have played um, just this year, since the beginning of 2021. I, uh, in preparation, when they announced um, uh, when they announced Dread, no, I'd already started. I, did, I, I decided earlier in the year I was going to play all the Metroid games. Um, and then Dread was announced and I, I blasted them. So just this year I've played through all of Metroid 2 for the Game Boy. Um, which we'll go into next, I guess, because it's the next one in the series. Um, I did Super Metroid a few years ago. I did Fusion, which, holy shit. Um, I did Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. I've done this and I've done Dread. So this has been a very Metroid heavy year and a very Metroid heavy few years for me. Again, the first thing that, like, with the NES Mini, I kind of looked at the Mario games and then went, okay, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna play Metroid. I, I think I did, I might even have done the first Legend of Zelda before I did Metroid. Whereas, um, when I got the SNES Mini, it's like, holy shit, now I get to play Super fucking Metroid. Oh my god, this is gonna be the most awesome thing ever. So, yeah. Um, very, very, like, the last few years have been very, very Metroid heavy, and I'm very thankful for it, because, God, I love this series. Um, next time we'll talk about what I believe to be the criminally underrated, uh, Metroid 2. And, um, I literally today, uh, literally today, I got Metroid, uh, Samus Returns, uh, for the DS. So, if I get time, I'll play a little bit of that before I record the next one and I'll maybe talk about that a little bit as well um, but yeah here we are we've um, we've had a look at the first Metroid we've done a little bit more uh, I've got to be honest I would have liked to have progressed a little more in this video at least got some more power-ups and stuff but I kind of been I'm not gonna lie I've been talking and not been really paying too much attention to what I've been doing and I now realise I've been in a bit of a loop, but, you know, uh, I'll try and do a bit more now. <laughs> I'll try and be a bit more varied next time. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed the chat, and um, I love Metroid. I love, I love, I love Metroid. See you next time.